Despite popular belief, I'm not actually all that trendy. I do my best. I follow the trends as best I can. I, I love trying out new beers, whether somebody's using an innovative and interesting new ingredients or techniques, whether that's champagne yeast, whether that's throwing an entire cake into the mix, whether that's using fruits and blowing cans up all over the place, whatever it is, I'm excited to try it. But deep down, deep in my heart of hearts, I love an old person beer. And it doesn't get much older or more old fashioned than this. This is 1698. It is brewed by Shepherd Neem, who claimed to be England's oldest brewer, and they have made for us here an English strong ale. Again, a very old and traditional style. The label is monochrome, very conservative, very traditional, almost austere. This wouldn't look out of place in a period drama set in the 1930s or 40s. This wouldn't look out of place, say, for instance, in Peaky Blinders, if it weren't for the fact that this is a Kent beer and they would never be drinking this stuff up in Birmingham. The label tells us to expect an Auburn beer with fruity, roasty, hoppy aromas and flavours. It does seem to be describing all of the fundamental flavours that you will find in a beer, which means they may be hedging their bets a little here, but let's crack it open and see exactly what we're working with. Already, this beer looks like the sort of beer that my dad likes to drink. It's auburn, it's got a loose, sort of creamy beige head, which is reta retained pretty well. It's very clear. Um, and you know, despite the fact that this is a real ale and we've been told to expect some sediment in the bottle that might have given the impression that we're going to get some, some cloudiness, this is sort of bright all the way through. You could read a book through this. The aroma is intensely malty. Caramel malt in particular with another sort of layer of sweetness below that, a little bit of honey, it's maybe some elderflower and a bit of apple. It's very enticing at this stage and I'm looking forward to, to seeing exactly how this tastes. The flavours are a real mix. There's that caramel malt again, that sweetness from the malt, a little bit of honey again, but rather than the apple we picked up on the aroma and the elderflower, now on the, on the palate we're getting more dark fruits, it's more like plum, blackberry, um, perhaps you know, a, little, a little estuary as well, a little bit of pear drop in there. There's clearly some dextrose left over in here as well, which is giving it quite a thick, slick mouthfeel. Really, you know, helping to give, bring a lot more body to this beer and at 6.5% you do kind of need that just to slow yourself down a little bit. Um, the finish and the aftertaste as you go through is um, again fairly sweet. Um, you're still getting a lot more of that plummy uh, black currenty, blackberry note, um, and again a little bit of that pear drop, estuary, uh, pear drop estuary flavor as well. It's not a terribly bitter beer, um, and while the beer label claims that this is going to be hoppy in terms of its aroma and flavor, um, it's not terribly hoppy in terms of the, the aromas and, and flavors we're picking up. We're not getting a lot of citrus, we're not getting a lot of, of those traditional hoppy flavors, except maybe for that elderflower that we, uh, we picked up very slightly on the aroma. So this is a very traditional, very old-fashioned, but ultimately very good English strong ale. So if you are one of those camera card-carrying members that I've been talking about all this time, then absolutely yes, this ticks all the boxes. I think ultimately though, it is a great example of bottle-conditioned real ale done quite well. And if you're looking for something to try to introduce yourself to the style, and it's not something you've really tried before, and certainly until, until pubs are back open again serving cask real ale, this is probably one of the most accessible and the easiest ways to get access to that kind of beer. So if you've not tried real ale before, if you've not tried bottle-conditioned, live, living, fermenting beer before, this is probably the easiest way to get hold of one that's really top-notch. You can pair this very easily with food. Ultimately, the, the best pairing I would suggest for this is with cheese and biscuits, with a good mature cheddar and some pickle. But ultimately, the experience of drinking this beer is probably best enjoyed outside on something resembling a pub table or a garden table, um, surrounded by men of a certain age who are wearing socks and sandals. That, I think, is probably the truest way to experience this style of beer. So that's what I made of Shepherd Neem's 1698 Kentish Strong Ale. What I want to hear now is what do you think? Have you tried this beer? 
Do you have a particular love for bottle conditioned real ales? Do you know any other bottle conditioned ales that you think are exciting and that I should try on this channel? If you've got any suggestions or comments, please let me know below or send me an email. And remember that if you liked this, you can find more of my videos and plenty of fresh content every week at brewreport.co.uk. And all that's left for me to say until next week is happy drinking. <laughs>